June 28th through July 4th. Doctrine and Covenants, Section 71 through 75. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Elder Quentin L. Cook taught, quote, The influence of the Holy Ghost most often accompanies individual scripture study and prayer in the home, end quote, from deep and lasting conversion to Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Ensign or Leahona, November 2018. Ever since he was a boy, Joseph Smith faced critics, even enemies, as he tried to do God's work. But it must have been particularly heartrending in late 1831 when Ezra Booth began publicly berating the church, because in this case the critic was a former believer. Ezra had seen Joseph use God's power to heal a woman. He had been invited to accompany Joseph on the first survey of the land of Zion in Missouri. But he had since lost his faith, and in an attempt to discredit the prophet, published a series of letters in an Ohio newspaper, and his efforts seemed to be working. Unfriendly feelings had developed against the church in the area. See Doctrine and Covenants, Section 71, Section Heading. What should believers do in a case like that? While there is not one right answer for every situation, it seems that quite often, including in this case in 1831, Part of the Lord's answer is to defend the truth and correct falsehoods by proclaiming the gospel. See verse 1. Yes, the Lord's work will always have critics, but in the end, no weapon that is formed against it shall prosper. See verse 9. See Ezra Booth and Isaac Morley from Revelations in Context, page 134. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study Doctrine and Covenants, section 71. The Lord will confound critics of His work in His own time. We may be concerned when we hear people criticizing or ridiculing the church or its leaders, especially when we're afraid people we know and love will be influenced by that criticism. When something similar happened in Ohio in 1831, see the section heading to Doctrine and Covenants, section 71, the Lord's message to Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon was one of faith, not fear. As you study Doctrine and Covenants section 71, what do you find that builds your faith in the Lord and His work? What impresses you about the instruction the Lord gave His servants in this situation? See also Robert D. Hale's Christian Courage, The Price of Discipleship, Ensigner Leahona, November 2008. Jörg Klebingat, Defending the Faith, Ensign, September 2017. Doctrine and Covenants section 72. Bishops are stewards over the spiritual and temporal affairs of the Lord's kingdom. When Newell K. Whitney was called to serve as the second bishop of the church, his duties were a little different from those of today's bishops. For example, Bishop Whitney oversaw the consecration of property and permission to settle in Missouri in the land of Zion. But as you read about his calling and duties in Doctrine and Covenants section 72, you might notice some connections to what bishops do today at least in the spirit, if not the specifics of their duties. For example, in what ways do you render an account to your bishop? See verse 5. In what sense does your bishop keep the Lord's storehouse and manage the consecrations of ward members? See verses 10 and 12. How has a bishop helped you? See also Gospel Topics, Bishop, topics.churchofjesuschrist.org. Doctrine and Covenants, Section 73. I can seek opportunities to share the gospel. After Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon returned from their brief preaching mission to repair some of the damage Ezra Booth had done, see Doctrine and Covenants, section 71, the Lord told them to return to the work of translating the Bible, see Bible Dictionary, Joseph Smith Translation. But he also wanted them to keep preaching the gospel. As you read Doctrine and Covenants, section 73, Consider how you can make preaching the gospel an ongoing, practicable, or realistic part of your life, among your other responsibilities. See verse 4. Doctrine and Covenants, section 75, verses 1 through 12. The Lord blesses those who faithfully proclaim His gospel. Responding to the command to go ye into all the world to preach the gospel, see Doctrine and Covenants, section 68, verse 8. Many faithful elders sought additional information about how the Lord wanted them to fulfill this command. 
What words and phrases do you find in Doctrine and Covenants, section 75, verses 1 through 12, that help you understand how to preach the gospel effectively? What blessings does the Lord promise to faithful missionaries? Consider how these instructions and blessings apply to you as you share the gospel. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Home Evening Doctrine and Covenants, Section 71 What were Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon asked to do when others were criticizing the church and its leaders? How do we prepare the way for people to receive God's revelations? See Doctrine and Covenants, Section 71, Verse 4 Doctrine and Covenants, Section 72, Verse 2 How have bishops blessed our family? What has our bishop asked us to do, and how can we sustain him? Perhaps your family could make a card thanking your bishop for his service. Doctrine and Covenants, Section 73, Verses 3-4 through four. Would your family benefit from learning about the Joseph Smith Translation of the Bible? See Bible Dictionary Joseph Smith Translation. You could explore a few of the passages that were revised in the Joseph Smith translation and discuss the precious truths the Lord revealed through the prophet. For some examples, see the Joseph Smith translation of Genesis, chapter 14, verses 25 through 40, and Genesis, chapter 50, verses 24 through 38 in the Bible appendix. Various footnotes in Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, and Luke, chapter 2, verse 46, footnote C. Doctrine and Covenants, section 74, verse 7. What does this verse teach us about Jesus Christ and little children? Doctrine and Covenants, section 75, verses 3 through 5, 13, and 16. You can help your family understand how the Lord wants us to serve Him by talking about the difference between being idle and laboring with our might. Perhaps you could select some household chores and invite family members to demonstrate doing those chores idly and then with all their might. How can we serve the Lord with all our might? According to Doctrine and Covenants, section 75, verses 3 through 5, 13, and 16, what does he promise his faithful servants? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline and come follow me for primary. Suggested song, Let Us All Press On, hymns number 243. Improving Personal Study Look for inspiring words and phrases. As you read, the Spirit may bring certain words or phrases to your attention. Consider making notes of words or phrases from Doctrine and Covenants sections 71 through 75 that inspire you. Section 71 Revelation given to Joseph Smith the Prophet and Sidney Rigdon at Hiram, Ohio, December 1, 1831 the prophet had continued to translate the Bible with Sidney Rigdon as his scribe until this revelation was received, at which time it was temporarily laid aside so as to enable them to fulfill the instruction given herein. The brethren were to go forth to preach in order to allay the unfriendly feelings that had developed against the church as a result of the publication of letters written by Ezra Booth, who had apostatized. 1 through 4, Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon are sent forth to proclaim the gospel. 5 through 11, enemies of the saints will be confounded. Behold, thus saith the Lord unto you, my servants, Joseph Smith, Jr., and Sidney Rigdon, that the time has verily come that it is necessary and expedient in me that you should open your mouths in proclaiming my gospel, the things of the kingdom expounding the mysteries thereof out of the scriptures according to that portion of spirit and power which shall be given unto you, even as I will. Verily I say unto you, Proclaim unto the world in the regions round about, and in the church also, for the space of a season, even until it shall be made known unto you. Verily this is a mission for a season, which I give unto you. Wherefore labor ye in my vineyard, Call upon the inhabitants of the earth, and bear record, and prepare the way for the commandments and revelations which are to come. Now behold, this is wisdom. Whoso readeth, let him understand and receive also. For unto him that receiveth, it shall be given more abundantly, even power. Wherefore, 
confound your enemies, call upon them to meet you both in public and in private. And inasmuch as ye are faithful, their shame shall be made manifest. Wherefore, let them bring forth their strong reasons against the Lord. Verily, thus saith the Lord unto you, There is no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And if any man lift his voice against you, he shall be confounded in mine own due time. Wherefore, keep my commandments, they are true and faithful. Even so, Section 72. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet at Kirtland, Ohio, December 4, 1831. Several elders and members had assembled to learn their duty and to be further edified in the teachings of the Church. This section is a compilation of three revelations received on the same day. Verses 1 through 8 make known the calling of Newell K. Whitney as a bishop. He was then called and ordained, after which verses 9 through 23 were received, giving additional information as to a bishop's duties. Thereafter, verses 24 through 26 were given, providing instructions concerning the gathering to Zion. 1 through 8. Elders are to render an account of their stewardship unto the bishop. 9 through 15. The bishop keeps the storehouse and cares for the poor and needy. 16 through 26. Bishops are to certify the worthiness of elders. Hearken and listen to the voice of the Lord, O ye who have assembled yourselves together, who are the high priests of my church, to whom the kingdom and power have been given. For verily thus saith the Lord, It is expedient in me for a bishop to be appointed unto you, or of you, unto the church in this part of the Lord's vineyard. And verily in this thing ye have done wisely, for it is required of the Lord at the hand of every steward to render an account of his stewardship, both in time and in eternity. For he who is faithful and wise in time is accounted worthy to inherit the mansions prepared for him of my Father. Verily I say unto you, The elders of the church in this part of my vineyard shall render an account of their stewardship unto the bishop who shall be appointed of me in this part of my vineyard. These things shall be had on record, to be handed over unto the bishop in Zion. And the duty of the bishop shall be made known by the commandments which have been given, and the voice of the conference. And now verily I say unto you, My servant Newell K. Whitney is the man who shall be appointed and ordained unto this power. This is the will of the Lord your God, your Redeemer. Even so, Amen. The word of the Lord, in addition to the law which has been given, making known the duty of the bishop who has been ordained unto the church in this part of the vineyard, which is verily this, to keep the Lord's storehouse, to receive the funds of the church in this part of the vineyard, to take an account of the elders as before has been commanded, and to administer to their wants, who shall pay for that which they receive, inasmuch as they have wherewith to pay, that this also may be consecrated to the good of the church, to the poor and needy? And he who hath not wherewith to pay, an account shall be taken and handed over to the bishop of Zion, who shall pay the debt out of that which the Lord shall put into his hands. And the labors of the faithful who labor in spiritual things, in administering the gospel, and the things of the kingdom unto the church, and unto the world, shall answer the debt unto the bishop in Zion. Thus it cometh out of the church, for according to the law every man that cometh up to Zion must lay all things before the bishop in Zion. And now verily I say unto you, that as every elder in this part of the vineyard must give an account of his stewardship unto the bishop in this part of the vineyard, a certificate from the judge or bishop in this part of the vineyard, unto the bishop in Zion, rendereth every man acceptable, and answereth all things, for an inheritance, and to be received as a wise steward and as a faithful laborer. Otherwise, he shall not be accepted of the bishop of Zion. And now verily I say unto you, 
Let every elder who shall give an account unto the bishop of the church in this part of the vineyard be recommended by the church or churches in which he labors, that he may render himself and his accounts approved in all things. And again, let my servants who are appointed as stewards over the literary concerns of my church have claim for assistance upon the bishop or bishops in all things, that the revelations may be published and go forth unto the ends of the earth, that they also may obtain funds which shall benefit the church in all things, that they also may render themselves approved in all things and be accounted as wise stewards. And now behold, this shall be an ensample for all the extensive branches of my church, in whatsoever land they shall be established. And now I make an end of my sayings. Amen. A few words in addition to the laws of the kingdom respecting the members of the church. They that are appointed by the Holy Spirit to go up unto Zion, and they who are privileged to go up unto Zion. Let them carry up unto the bishop a certificate from three elders of the church, or a certificate from the bishop. Otherwise he who shall go up unto the land of Zion shall not be accounted as a wise steward. This is also an ensample. Amen. Section 73. Revelation given to Joseph Smith the prophet and Sidney Rigdon at Hiram, Ohio, January 10, 1832. Since the early part of the preceding December, the prophet and Sidney had been engaged in preaching, and by this means much was accomplished in diminishing the unfavorable feelings that had arisen against the church. See the heading to section 71. 1 through 2. Elders are to continue to preach. 3 through 6. Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon are to continue to translate the Bible until it is finished. For verily thus saith the Lord, It is expedient in me that they should continue preaching the gospel and in exhortation to the churches in the regions round about until conference. And then, behold, it shall be made known unto them by the voice of the conference their several missions. Now verily I say unto you, my servants Joseph Smith, Jr., and Sidney Rigdon, saith the Lord, it is expedient to translate again, and inasmuch as it is practicable to preach in the regions round about until conference. And after that, it is expedient to continue the work of translation until it be finished. And let this be a pattern unto the elders until further knowledge, even as it is written. Now I give no more unto you at this time. Gird up your loins and be sober. Even so, Amen. Section 74. Revelation given to Joseph Smith the prophet at Wayne County, New York, in 1830. Even before the organization of the church, questions had arisen about the proper mode of baptism, leading the prophet to seek answers on the subject. Joseph Smith's history states that this revelation is an explanation of 1 Corinthians Chapter 7, verse 14, a scripture that had often been used to justify infant baptism. 1 through 5, Paul counsels the church of his day not to keep the law of Moses. 6 through 7, little children are holy and are sanctified through the atonement. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Now in the days of the apostles, the law of circumcision was had among all the Jews who believed not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it came to pass that there arose a great contention among the people concerning the law of circumcision. For the unbelieving husband was desirous that his children should be circumcised and become subject to the law of Moses, which law was fulfilled. And it came to pass that the children, being brought up in subjection to the law of Moses, gave heed to the traditions of their fathers, and believed not the gospel of Christ, wherein they became unholy. Wherefore, for this cause the apostle wrote unto the church, giving unto them a commandment, not of the Lord, but of himself, 
that a believer should not be united to an unbeliever, except the law of Moses should be done away among them, that their children might remain without circumcision, and that the tradition might be done away, which saith that little children are unholy, for it was had among the Jews. But little children are holy, being sanctified through the atonement of Jesus Christ. And this is what Section 75. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet at Amherst, Ohio, January 25, 1832. This section comprises two separate revelations, the first in verses 1 through 22 and the second in verses 23 through 36, given on the same day. The occasion was a conference at which Joseph Smith was sustained and ordained president of the high priesthood. Certain elders desired to learn more about their immediate duties. These revelations followed. 1 through 5. Faithful elders who preach the gospel will gain eternal life. 6 through 12. Pray to receive the Comforter who teaches all things. 13 through 22. Elders will sit in judgment on those who reject their message. 23 through 36. Families of missionaries are to receive help from the church. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I who speak even by the voice of my Spirit, even Alpha and Omega, your Lord and your God, hearken, O ye who have given your names to go forth to proclaim my gospel and to prune my vineyard. Behold, I say unto you, that it is my will that you should go forth and not tarry, neither be idle, but labor with your might, lifting up your voices as with the sound of a trump, proclaiming the truth according to the revelations and commandments which I have given you. And thus, if ye are faithful, ye shall be laden with many sheaves, and crowned with honor and glory and immortality and eternal life. Therefore verily I say unto my servant William E. McClellan, I revoke the commission which I gave unto him to go unto the eastern countries. And I give unto him a new commission, and a new commandment, in the which I, the Lord, chasten him for the murmurings of his heart. And he sinned. Nevertheless, I forgive him, and say unto him again, Go ye into the south countries. And let my servant Luke Johnson go with him, and proclaim the things which I have commanded them calling on the name of the Lord for the Comforter, which shall teach them all things that are expedient for them, praying always that they faint not. And inasmuch as they do this, I will be with them, even unto the end. Behold, this is the will of the Lord your God concerning you. Even so, Amen. And again verily thus saith the Lord, Let my servant Orson Hyde and my servant Samuel H. Smith, take their journey into the eastern countries, and proclaim the things which I have commanded them, and inasmuch as they are faithful, lo, I will be with them, even unto the end. And again, verily I say unto my servant Lyman Johnson, and unto my servant Orson Pratt, they shall also take their journey into the eastern countries, and behold, and lo, I am with them also even unto the end. And again I say unto my servant Asa Dodds, and unto my servant Cavs Wilson, that they also shall take their journey unto the western countries, and proclaim my gospel, even as I have commanded them. And he who is faithful shall overcome all things, and shall be lifted up at the last day. And again I say unto my servant Major N. Ashley, and my servant Burr Riggs, let them take their journey also into the south country. Yea, let all those take their journey, as I have commanded them, going from house to house, and from village to village, and from city to city. And in whatsoever house ye enter, and they receive you, leave your blessing upon that house. And in whatsoever house ye enter, and they receive you not, ye shall depart speedily from that house, and shake off the dust of your feet, as a testimony against them. And you shall be filled with joy and gladness. And know this, 
that in the day of judgment you shall be judges of that house, and condemn them. And it shall be more tolerable for the heathen in the day of judgment than for that house. Therefore gird up your loins, and be faithful, and ye shall overcome all things, and be lifted up at the last day. Even so, Amen. And again thus saith the Lord unto you, O ye elders of my church, who have given your names, that you might know his will concerning you. Behold, I say unto you, that it is the duty of the church to assist in supporting the families of those, and also to support the families of those who are called, and must needs be sent unto the world, to proclaim the gospel unto the world. Wherefore I, the Lord, give unto you this commandment, that ye obtain places for your families, inasmuch as your brethren are willing to open their hearts. And let all such as can obtain places for their families, and support of the church for them, not fail to go into the world, whether to the east, or to the west, or to the north, or to the south. Let them ask, and they shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto them, and be made known from on high, even by the Comforter, whither they shall go. And again verily I say unto you, that every man who is obliged to provide for his own family, let him provide, and he shall in no wise lose his crown, and let him labor in the church. Let every man be diligent in all things, and the idler shall not have place in the church, except he repent and mend his ways. Wherefore, let my servant Simeon Carter and my servant Emer Harris be united in the ministry, and also my servant Ezra Thayer and my servant Thomas B. Marsh, also my servant Hiram Smith and my servant Reynolds Cahoon, and also my servant Daniel Stanton and my servant Seymour Brunson, and also my servant Sylvester Smith and my servant Gideon Carter and also my servant Ruggles Eames, and my servant Stephen Burnett, and also my servant Micah B. Welton, and also my servant Eden Smith. Even so, Amen.